Hey, peace, love, and light, my beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to First Eye Visions. My name is Q, and I am here to do the They Pray and Pray on Your Downfall series. I welcome anyone that may be new to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. This is going to be a general reading, so my spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. I know that you're more than just your sun sign. So check your moon, check your rising, your Venus, your Mercury, your Mars. Just check your other placements for a more clear and concise message for you. This is also timeless. So whenever you find yourselves clicking on the video, that was the divine timing intended for you all to do so. For anyone that may be new, welcome. My name is Q. I too am a Scorpio. I channel messages intuitively. I am an empath and I am also clairaudient. So I incorporate music into the readings. And they tend to blend very beautifully with the messages that come out in the tarot cards. Right now we have De La Soul, Soul excuse me, and the name of the song is called Stakes is High. So I feel like somebody is, is, is making a gamble. Um, somebody is gambling something and the chances of them winning is very slim to none. I feel like somebody is going to gamble and there's a chance that they could lose. There's no guarantee that this is going to, to rule in their favor, come out in their favor. Um, so it's almost a chance that um, somebody is taking a chance, I should say. Um, and it very well may not be something that is uh, in their favor. So it would behoove anyone to really go back to the drawing board to make sure this is the type of gamble they wish to take. Uh, with stakes as high, that sounds like this could be a very, very... Um, it could be a long fall from grace. Uh, so, you know, if there's anybody lurking in the background, any of these haters, because uh, this is the They Pray and Pray on Your Downfall series, any of these folks that are trying to gamble to take a shot and then they miss, and then you see where that shot came from, the direction in which that shot came from, that means you can retaliate. That means that you can, uh, you will have the upper hand, so to speak. So it's almost as if somebody is going to take uh, some sort of gamble and they're not going to be prepared. It's like they don't have a B, C, D, E, Z, all the way to Z plan. It's just like they're, they're just, you know, going all in. You know, if you think of the casino and how they'll have the chips, it's almost like somebody's moving every single last one of their chips into the center of the the um, the, the the game board and saying, here, let, let's see what I get. And it's it's not going to be it's not going to be pretty. Um, but that's what I'm getting um, for anybody that's wondering. This is the blackout series. This is the uh, you know, I call this the dark matter series. Um, I'm, I'm completely in the dark. So, no, there's nothing wrong with the picture. This is how I'm recording. OK, um, so you don't have to question that uh, because that is exactly on purpose. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead. Let's do some house cleaning. All right. Let's call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ah, shade. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator, to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Baba Ogun, and Mama Oya to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibration of my cards. And so it is, so mo to be. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So what I see on the bottom of the numerology deck is pride. So I feel like somebody's pride. Maybe somebody's doing something for show. You know, maybe somebody is, is you know, trying to play Mr. Tough Guy or trying to play like they know it all. Um, and so they, they're, they're willing to, to uh, you know, showboat in a sense. You know, that's why they're, they're betting all of their chips at one time or they're doing something very showboaty uh, because they know that all eyes are on them or they're doing it just to, you know, appear a certain way. With pride, I feel like somebody's ego is super inflated right now um, but there's going to be an ego death because this is the number 19 and that reduces the 10 so there's some sort of um, there's something that's going to humble someone I feel like there's going to be like I said somebody's not uh, going to have the results that they're anticipating or expecting and um, it's really going to humble them um, on the split we have synchronicity 
uh, and that is the number 87, which is 15, which is six. So uh, maybe somebody took a chance at love uh, because the six is the lovers in traditional tarot. Uh, they didn't follow their intuition. And um, that's what led them, you know, to uh, thinking the grass would be greener on the other side so much so that they um, bet all their chips and didn't have a backup plan, didn't have anything um, to fall back on. So those stakes was high. Um, right now we have free. So I feel like this kind of freed you from a connection with somebody who who was very careless um, and very um, ignorant, you know, very blind to the fact. It's almost like this is somebody that is um, very flighty, you know, very unreliable, somebody who kind of is easily influenced, you know, so maybe there were some folks chirping in this individual's ear, kind of, you know, motivate, you know, encouraging them to do something. And so like, because I was just picking up, you know, the fact that somebody was very showboaty. So it was almost like they was doing it because they had an audience, you know, uh, maybe this is something that they typically wouldn't have done, but because they had an audience, they were trying to put on a show. Um, Joe Scott right now is singing free. So I feel like this, this, this hiccup, this person showing their hand, so to speak, um, is what lets you know that you needed to free yourself from this situation. Uh, so I do feel a sense of you, you know, cutting your ties with that person, walking away. Um, I feel like you feel freer now also because maybe this person was very burdensome. Um, maybe they weighed you down, held you back, blocked you in some way. You know, this is like an energy vampire. Um, on the split now, what I see is uh, 26 love partnership. And then I see 67 physical activity. And that reduces to 13, whereas the 26 reduces to 8. So this love partnership is something you walked away from. I immediately thought of like the 8 of cups. So I feel like you walked away from this connection because there wasn't enough equal give and take. With this 67, that's 13. Um, so I do feel like this is what caused, you know, the death of this connection was this person was not as reciprocal. Um, they weren't as attentive to your needs. Um, they weren't the type of person that made you feel protected or made you feel valued. Um, this wasn't the type of person that honored you. And so I feel like what you did was you walked away because you knew self-love makes you more uh, attractive ultimately. Um, and I feel like you focused more so on your healing because that eight could also be seen as the star. Um, a lot of you also, you know, started to hone skills, gifts, talents, started to master yourself, started to work on um, self-improvement. Uh, maybe some of you all took classes. Um, maybe some of you all started to work on certain business endeavors, uh, started to, you know, kind of um, sharpen certain skill sets. Or maybe you even went back to school to build your wealth of knowledge. Um, but I do feel a sense of like growth, working on the self healing, improving, growing, um, and then re-emerging someone brand new. Um, this 13 is showing that there was a death of the old, but there is a re-emergence of something new. It's almost like that phoenix rising from the ashes. Someone thinking that you're dead, stinking, and buried only to see you shoot to the stars. So it's like you are now very strong. Um, that four is about stability, sturdiness, strength. Um, it's also about security and and stability ultimately. So I feel like you've learned to be more self-sufficient and independent um, through the death, through the demise of a relationship. Uh, and that could ultimately be the reason why um, now somebody is second, you know, looking at the situation again, um, realizing that, you know, they, they, they may have taken um, uncalculated risks in this situation because this 67 as i said that reduces to 13 so that's the death the death represents that scorpionic energy and scorpios are very um powerful in transmuting uh pain and turning it into powerful uh energy you're very much the conduits of change uh when most people count you out after you know sticking that last sword that tenth sword in your back they don't realize that uh, you rise from the ashes. They don't realize that you re-emerge, you reincarnate, you transform, you have a rebirth. Uh, so you've gone through some sort of startling metamorphosis, which triggered the change, the transformation within yourself. And it was due in part to someone not being um, very attentive, uh, someone not really um, respecting or honoring you in the way uh, that you absolutely deserved. Um, and so I feel there was ultimately, um, you know, this epiphany that may have taken over, um, you know, in terms of you understanding what you needed, what works for you, 
Um, and that's why you ultimately freed yourself from that connection because you felt like it was restricting you or it was blocking you from your happiness and your peace. So right now we have um, Yes, and the name of the song is called Owner of a Lonely Heart. So I feel there was a, a lot of loneliness in this connection. Maybe this is something that you were feeling in this relationship, or maybe this is something that you were struggling after walking away, after freeing yourself, is you felt lonely, you know? Um, but you were lonely because you were in a relationship with someone that was absent. Um, and so maybe that's why uh, this, this, this energy is here, is you felt like you were the owner of a lonely heart because this person, as I said, wasn't as reciprocal um, this was someone who was very vacant. You know, they were not there. They weren't present. Um, I feel like for you, um, you were looking for a cosmic companion. Uh, you were looking for that person that was going to be willing to take the journey with you through the good, the bad and the ugly. And I feel like this person may have been there for all of the good times, but may have abandoned you during those difficult times. So that's just what I'm channeling. Let's see what we got coming in, going out, going on. So who is praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Who's hating and praying on our beloved Scorpio's downfall and why? I feel like this person is also um, lonely because whatever they was chasing after, um, it mirrored their energy. And this isn't somebody who is um, very emotionally intelligent. This is somebody who goes, you know, after physical uh, beauty, materialistic, um, very, very superficial type of energy. So let's see. Let's go ahead. We're going to cut the deck. And this is the numerology deck. Bottom of the deck, we have pride. So pride came right back out. So the person that you um, that's hating and preying on your downfall is someone that was very proud, someone very egotistical, stubborn. Um, this was someone who thought that they was a boss, a leader, um, and they were doing a lot of things, uh, like I said, out of um, just just blind ignorance. You know, this is someone who was very showboaty, very arrogant almost. Um, but I do see that there's an ego death here because this is the number 19. And I feel it's because something was completed, whether this karmic connection was completed, um, this awakened someone uh, perhaps to... Uh, how they are coming off perhaps uh because we have owner of a lonely heart so maybe this person is realizing you know even though they have all these people around they're still lonely um even though there's all these women or all these men around they still feel lonely and that's a void that they have to fill within themselves um people don't realize that you know their love love is an inside job happiness is an inside job um all of the things you look for in your mate it has to first reside in you you have to first embody that energy you have to give that energy out to the ethers in order for you to attract that so i feel someone's pride and ego may have blocked them from seeing things um a certain way this could have been someone who had a bunch of yes people around them uh people who were this just there to appease and please and maybe even you played a role in that uh where you may have really um i feel like you may have um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm looking for a certain word. Give me the word spirit. Give me one moment. So the word I was looking for was, um, enabling. So it's like you enabled, uh, someone's bad behavior because perhaps maybe you just, you just accepted them. Um, for who they were, good, bad, and, and ugly. You know, as I said earlier, um, you were looking for that cosmic companion. And I feel, you know, in many ways, you may have thought that that person um, was your cosmic companion. You were willing to accept them, um, flaws and all, you know, but they had one too many vices for you. And one of them was perhaps their stubbornness, um, their need to have people around them to, uh, you know, appease and please them, um, yes them to death. And so this pride is what led to the demise of a relationship uh, because someone was very proud. Uh, someone was very stubborn, not willing to, uh, you know, compromise, not willing to uh, be vulnerable, not willing to let their guard down. Um, and I feel like this ultimately uh, became very exhausting for you, Scorpio. We have teaching and learning. Um, 
on the bottom of the deck in my hand. Uh, you know, so this is really showing me that this was a relationship that was karmic. Um, this was something that you had to learn some very valuable cause, uh, karmic lessons from this person and they you. Um, and these, this teaching and learning is leading uh, to a brand new beginning, a brand new start. It's like now you know to, to follow your heart's truest desires opposed to, you know, hiding behind the scenes and not speaking your truth or not saying how you feel. It's almost like this person swallowed you. It's like they, they then enveloped you uh, personality wise and you were just kind of there, but not really because they overpowered everything. They were controlling in a lot of ways as well. And I have um, teaching and learning, that's 12. Um, that's the number 57, so that reduces to 12. And so I am sensing that there is um, a sense that, you know, this did uh, cause a lot of heartbreak, you know. Um, this caused a lot of pain because I first thought of the Three of Swords when I heard the 12 because that breaks down the three. Um, but I also feel like there's someone who's desiring to come back to return. Uh, but I don't feel um, that you're going to be as open and reciprocal or um, as... Um, how do you say not reciprocal? You're not going to be as receptive. Thank you, spirit, um, to this energy. Uh, we have Eric Sermon and this is called Tell Me. So I feel like somebody's coming back to tell you something. Maybe they're going to tell you that they were very proud. Um, you know, I'm hearing Sade's uh, love is stronger than pride. Um, so maybe this person is going to try to uh, convince you that their love for you um, is stronger than pride or maybe this person's inability to show you love um, is only proof that they didn't love you because love is stronger than pride. So someone would, would be more willing to show you love opposed to being more stubborn and proud. Um, but with teaching and learning, you've taught this person uh, perhaps how to be strong um, because a part of a strength for a masculine is their ability to be vulnerable. Um, a lot of masculines struggle with vulnerability, struggle with um, showing emotion, uh, crying, things of that sort, because a lot of them feel like it's a weakness, but it's absolutely a truth. And I feel like a lot of that is pride, you know, learning things during their childhood or maybe in their um, environments, um, you know, learning certain things, picking up certain belief systems pertaining uh, what manhood is or uh, what masculinity is. And I feel like now, you know, bumping into you, you've taught someone, um, you know, what, what's masculine is their ability to be, you know, very, uh, very vulnerable. That's a part of their strength. So they're learned, they've learned from you, you know, um, what I'm hearing right now, we have waterfalls playing by TLC. And so with waterfalls, I do feel like now there's an opportunity for healing because as I said, with this pride, you know, the pride deals with, you know, like I said, ego, inflated ego, um, you know, living in la la land, thinking that the rules don't apply to you, um, trying to hide from your feelings, trying to, 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 um, stunt like you don't care, like you care less. Um, but on the inside, you're all mushy inside. I feel with this waterfalls, there's been some sort of healing. There's been a lot of deep healing. There's been a lot of, of, of grounding, uh, one's energy. There's been a lot of purification, releasing, letting go, clean, clearing and cleansing, purging, um, and just, you know, recharging ultimately. And I feel that energy comes from you, uh, because we have teaching and learning. So you have been the student and the teacher. Um, I feel Scorpio in this regard. And I feel like with this waterfalls, um, I feel by you being more focused on yourself and loving yourself um, and just lo showing that self-love, that self-care, it really puts you in the divine feminine or divine masculine energy um, because that's really what that Aphrodite energy is. It's about self-care. And so I feel like you started to show yourself that tender, loving care. Um, and that's ultimately what led you to healing at a deeper soul level and really soul searching and really taking those deep dives and really doing those internal self audits to discover, you know, that there was things that you were carrying that needed to be let go. So those energetic bound uh, baggage, baggages, you know, all of that needed to be purged and released. And now you're um, 
you're feeling more grounded, balanced, and in alignment. So who's preying on our beloved Scorpios and why? And I feel like that's that's a major threat to anyone, you know, who's used to being able to get away with things and then you heal and you transform and you have this great rebirth. It's like it's really something that it, it, it triggers someone, you know. So who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? Thank you, spirit. So I have 71 health. And this is the, um, it reduces to eight. So there's uh, someone's mental health now. Someone's up in their head. And these cards that came out are interchanged. So there's orange on the inside of the sim symbol of the uh, pride card. And then there's purple on the outside of the card. And then on the health card, there's orange on the outside of the card. And then purple is on the inside. So I do feel, you know, this narrative of where someone is up in their head. Um, this is almost like ruminating, pining, agonizing, um, being anxious, you know, thinking of things, um, you know, and what they're saying is don't go chasing waterfalls. Uh, so this person was almost like chasing some sort of illusion. They was chasing something that simply wasn't, you know, what they uh, imagined it to be or thought it would be. And that was kind of like the narrative I was getting in the beginning where somebody was, you know, with that stakes as high. They may have took a gamble and, you know, they didn't really calculate the risks and they messed around and lost and now they're the owner of a lonely heart and and i feel like it's because they had a bunch of yes men around them giving them bad advice and they weren't necessarily listening to their intuition so now with this energy right here with the health card someone is really uh struggling with mental conflict so whoever's praying on your downfall is really you know struggling mentally um and i feel like it's because they're constantly thinking of you constantly you know um pining over this situation, um, singing it coulda, shoulda, wouldas. We have Nikki D and this is called Daddy's Little Girl. Um, so this is somebody who's really, you know, maybe this is someone you have a child with, a daughter with, or maybe this is someone who could really be, um, who could have went back to deal with perhaps a mother um, of their child or of their children. Um, maybe this is just somebody who is acting like a child. Um, somebody who needed to do their, uh, their healing, needed to heal their inner child. Um, I see on the bottom of the deck, the number one, and this is new beginnings. So you're having some sort of, uh, passionate new start, brand new start. And I feel like that's why there's some sense of, of, um, disdain, frustration, jealousy, ang and, and envy because you're moving on. You're not looking backwards, um, because you've learned some sort of lesson. And not only did you learn, you've, you've grown from this lesson. We got karmic completion. We have personal growth. We have um, uh, teaching and learning and then new beginnings underneath, um, in, um, you know, in the deck underneath my hand. So this is exactly what I just said. It's like you have grown from this experience, you know, as, as this eight uh, you know, not only does that remind me of the eight of swords energy where, you know, someone is kind of like stuck in their head. That could be self-deception. Um, that could be just confusion, mental conflict, like I said. Um, but that could also be giving me uh, the energy of like the star, the healing energy, um, healing from the betrayals, the disappointments, the infidelities, the lies, the deception, the cheating, the gossiping, you know, healing from that. And, and, and transmuting the pain that you felt from those circumstances and then, you know, rising like the phoenix from the ashes to have this new beginning. You know, this is like a wish fulfillment to have this brand new start. And it's because you're following uh, your heart's truest desires. And it's because you've learned the lessons. With the teaching and learning, every great healer has to first heal themselves. And this is why the personal growth is here, because you have been learning in this process. You haven't been repeating cycles. You haven't been you know, going backwards, you've been moving forward, upward and onward. And so that's why there's this completion here. And you've completed this, this karmic lesson um, flawlessly. I hear the train. So that's movement. Trains represent movement. Um, they could even be traveling uh, in your future. You could be, uh, you know, there could be a guest coming to visit you or you could be going to, um, you know, on some sort of vacation soon. So let's see who's praying on our beloved Scorpios and why they have a message of love and light. All of those were on the bottom of the deck. They didn't fall out. I was just telling you what I had in my hand. I do feel like a lot of you, um, you're your father's little girl, uh, regardless for life, regardless of how old you are. Even if your father has uh, transitioned um, and is in the spirit realm, I feel like they really protect you. 
they watch over you um, and it is 952 so that breaks down to seven um, so this is someone who absolutely uh, because that 9 and 52, that's 9 and 7, that reduces to 16, that's 7. So I do feel like this is an angel. This is somebody in the spirit realm um, that watches over you. So a lot of you who have lost your beloved papas, babas, um, you know, they are watching over you. You will always um, have their love. Your Their love is infinite. Um, and I do feel like, you know, they're helping you with with moving forward, with, with taking the reins in your life. And, and standing powerful, powerfully, you know, and, and taking your power back, more importantly. Um, I feel like a lot of you all are um, really owning your power right now. And you're also bossing up. There's a sense that, you know, with this 9, um, 81 reduces to 9. There could be some sort of like wish fulfillment. Or maybe you're just being very selfish. You're loving yourself. You're working on yourself. You're healing yourself. And you're mastering yourself. Um so this is also that energy um, that hermit energy is also coming through. So I feel like a lot of you are not socializing as much right now. It's because you could be like, you know, fine tuning some things, mastering some things, uh, working on some brilliant ideas. Like I said, some business endeavors, maybe you're still in that studentship energy where you're in school. Um, you could be, you know, um, seeking wise counsel or just building your wealth of knowledge in general. Um, spiritually or academically, either or. Um, right now we have uh, Solange, and this is called Cranes in the, St in the Sky. And um, so, yeah, maybe some of you all are seeing crane birds. Um, maybe some of you all um, are having some sort of epiphanies. But I do feel like there's some sort of communication. Um, personal growth is on the bottom of the deck as I looked at it. So, yeah, this is just showing, like, you're, you're thinking more logically now before you take action. It's like there's a sense of you, you know, kind of making sure that before you take action, before you make any decisions, you, you, you are um, using your logic. You're not allowing your heart to decide for you anymore because maybe that's what landed you, um, you know, in circumstances in the past. So we have um, self-discipline here. So someone's really... Um, really hating and praying on your downfall because you're exhibiting self-control right now. Self-discipline is encompassing of self-love, self-worth, self-value, self-care. Uh, self and with cranes in the sky, I feel like, as I said, you're more, um, you're more mindful now to, to, you know, look at everything, look at the whole picture with this 50, uh, this is 41. So that's five. So there is a sense that you are um, and have been really, um, you know, standing in your truth now, not backing down. I feel like a lot of you have found your voice. A lot of you are standing up for what you believe in, speaking your truth with, you know, cranes in the sky. I feel like that's also just speaking, you know, to you having, you know, that bird's eye view now, you know, being able to observe situations and, and seeing why things may have happened the way they did that they did in the past or why um, certain lessons, you know, were meant for you to learn. Uh, we got karmic completion on the bottom of the deck in my hand. So you've absolutely completed a cycle. And I feel like a lot of uh, the lessons that you were needing to learn uh, involved um, self-awareness because a lot of the self-referencing is, is about self-awareness. As I said before, self-love you know, love is an inside job, respect, inside job, care. You know, all of those things you seek others to to give you is is something that you have to first show yourself. So it's, it's, it's like you're teaching people ultimately how to treat you. And if you're not showing other people that you have this self-respect for yourself or this self-love, then they're going to come in and they're going to exploit that. They're going to take advantage. They're going to take you for granted. And that's probably what happened. And there's green on the inside of this card. And it's all orange. And so I feel like there is a sense now that, you know, there's this 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 uh, emotional um, equilibrium that you have now. You have a love for self. You have this self-discipline where you're not allowing anyone to disrespect you, dishonor you, uh, mistreat you because you have healthy boundaries and you know your worth now. And with karmic completion, that was a lesson you had to learn. That was a lesson meant for you. And so 
Let's see who else is praying on our beloved Scorpios downfall and why beloved spirit. Who's praying on our beloved Scorpios downfall and why? Who's praying on our beloved Scorpios downfall? Thank you. And we have changed because you've changed. And I heard you change for the better. You've been changing. You know, you have shed a lot of that old, you know, that old skin, that old version of yourself. It has died because we saw that 67 physical activity. So you've been very proactive and really like, you know, healing yourself, changing, growing, you know, transmuting negative energy. And we have Talib Kweli and Z Trip, and this is called To The Music. And so you've changed. You know, a lot of you all have really, um, what I'm hearing is a lot of y'all, you know, changed after being attacked because the name of this album is called Attack The Block. So I am feeling like, you know, a lot of y'all had to change because you were being attacked. You were being, you know, almost bullied in a, in a degree. It's like spiritual bullying, you know, because maybe some folks was like attacking you um, spiritually. You know, I see this five. So that's always speaking to like conflict challenges. And those were the things that triggered this change, triggered this growth, triggered this um, this need to be, you know, self-disciplined. As I said, that's an inside job. So if you allow people to walk all over you, that's what they're going to do. And I feel like you had to change you first. And in you changing you, you've changed the whole frequency and dynamic in which how people in which people treated you with. Uh, we got perseverance on the bottom of the deck. Number four. So that's the fourth chakra. That's the heart. But that four is also the divine masculine, the emperor. And so I am feeling, you know, a lot like you were dealing with someone who could have, you know, been someone you were in a relationship with. This could be the mother or father of your child. Um, even though it's the four, the emperor, it could have been the empress. It could have been, you know, it could have been that feminine energy. And I feel like you have changed a lot, you know, uh, from being in this relationship. This was a part of, like I said, um, a karmic lesson, which means it was your destiny. It was destined for you to go through what you went through. It wasn't uh, uh, accidental. It wasn't by happenstance. Because there were lessons you needed to learn. And I feel like the same lessons you needed to learn, someone else also needed to learn them. So you both were holding up a mirror to one another so that you could see that shadow work that needed to be done. And I feel like, Scorpios, you all have been doing your shadow work. And that's why you had karmic completion. And that's why the rebirth and all of those things um, were kind of very poignant. Because I feel there's been major change and transformation um, done on your part which is why karmic completion showed up. So that could be something that was, you know, not, j not just from this lifetime. You know, sometimes karma is, uh, you know, accredited, uh, you know, through different, you know, lifetimes, lifespans. You know, they could almost feel like, you know, a generational curse or a yoke. In many, time, in many um, instances, there are um, family yokes, you know, that, that you may be the one in your family that is strong enough to break such a thing. Um, and I feel like for many of you, that's what you, that's what you were called to do because I do feel like there's a strong sense that the Scorpios that tune and tap into this channel, um, they have some sort of spiritual duty. You know, you have a duty here, um, in the space and time to help the collective because those are the messages that come out, uh, frequently, quite often. And with this perseverance here, I am seeing it's all green. So you have grown, you know, you have grown through all of the attacks, all of the pain, all of the hurt. Um, and you're now emotionally balanced. You know, this four is a very solid number. But I feel like the divine is saying you have really shown a lot of strength. You've, you've been very resilient um, in this process. Uh, and ultimately, you have grown from these uh, experiences they did you didn't allow them to break you um and this is why uh you know you are you know seen as a great healer um because you've been able to you've been able to heal yourself from these pains you know you've been able to heal from this great pain we got tupac keep your head up right now so regardless of how things appear keep your head to the sky and i'm here earth wind and fire keep your head to the sky I'm hearing that <laughs> divine spirit of love and light who's praying on our beloved Scorpios and why rising power Tupac 
Yeah, there might be a decision with that two reference. And so we have financial discipline and we have parenting. So you could be dealing with somebody who's um, the mother or father to your child. Um, maybe some of you all are birthing new ideas, as I said, and you could be investing in, you know, your dreams right now. You know, maybe you're really focusing on money management, you know, getting your coins up. Uh, maybe you just got your mind and your money, money in your mind, cash rules, everything around you, cream, get the money, dollar, dollar bills. So you could be working long hours, overtime, whatever it is, keep your head to the sky, you know, stay focused. You know, that too could be, you know, referencing the two and the two and two pop could be referencing like the two of pentacles where you're juggling a, rock, a lot right now. That home, you know, and that work and, and life balance could be really difficult. Um, there's 37 time out on the bottom of the deck. So I feel like the divine is telling you to like take a moment to woo to catch your breath, to meditate, to connect, um, you know, because, you know, everybody needs to 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 get that time to themselves. So maybe you need to, to go and, and, and maybe go in for a spa day. Maybe you need to go and, and have, you know, because that too is also the second chakra, which is the sacral. You know, the sacral is all about self-care. You know, so maybe you need to go and, and, and really focus on self-care, um, you know, really love on yourselves right now. Really show, you know, that that uh, that self-love, really show that self-discipline, focus on the self, get yourself back in order. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead. We're going to tap and see who else is praying on our downfall and why, beloveds. So let's see what we got coming and going out, going on. So I'm going to use a couple of cards that I created um, and we're going to go ahead. So on the split, we have you are uniquely made beautiful soul and we have feather and it says protection and love from your guardian angels. And I was picking up some of you all had a father who was in the spirit realm, even if you don't have a father, um, whoever your beloved is, whether it's a masculine energy or a feminine energy, um, I'm feeling strongly like a, a father figure um, was coming through earlier. Um, but like I said, it could be a mother, father, grandmother, uh, grandfather, uncle. Uh, it could even be a sibling, like a brother um, or a sister. Um, someone realizes that you're beautiful. Um, you're unique. You're rare. You're like an earth angel. Um, you're someone that they're not going to be able to find twice. Um, I feel like you also realize that about yourself. You know that you are unique you know you're starting to accept yourselves for who you are you know you're starting to appreciate your individuality you know you're starting to appreciate your strengths you know many of you are enjoying being single you know enjoying the single life enjoying getting to know yourselves better getting to know you know what you like opposed to what you don't like um, and even what you need you know um, so let's go ahead let's keep shuffling so we got good things take time to create with you are beautifully made or uniquely made beautiful soul. So yeah, good things take time to create and we all know that. And it says patience, young grasshopper. I feel like you all have been um, showing a lot of patience. I mean, patience is a form of action. So you haven't been, you know, just kind of like sitting around waiting. I feel like you've really been very proactive um, in healing, in healing yourself, soul searching. Um, we got for the love of money, cheddar cheese, biscuits, dough. Um, and it says greed here. So somebody could be coming back because maybe uh, they could be struggling. We do have financial discipline and parenting here. So this could be the other, uh, you know, this, you know, the other parent or someone um, that you may have had a child with that could be, you know, coming around for some sort of security reasons. Um, we got Nas, uh, Notorious B.I.G. and this is called Nasty Boy. Um, so this could be the father, um, if this is a masculine energy, they were very nasty, um, and, and nasty in many ways. Um, I'm hearing nasty in terms of, um, the, the, the trickery, the games, the lies, um, the deception, even stealing, going as far as, um, stealing money. Um, and this was the father to your child. I feel like a lot of you all got hip to that. And I feel like you started to, um, listen to your intuition, uh, when it came to someone you had some sort of grand epiphany and that could have led to the reason um, of you walking away and completely um, maybe some of you all changed. I heard some of y'all changed your address, changed your numbers. Um, but yeah, so on the bottom of the deck, we got sacred space, 
offerings honor your ancestors god spirit team and this is clarifying pride uh and that's the number 19. so i am see I'm, i i am feeling like you know uh what you all did to you know really heal from this this arrogant um egomaniac is you just kind of created a sacred space a safe space for yourselves many of you really started to devote more time connecting with the divine you know with healing yourselves um, with the soul searching, with connecting with your ancestors, working on yourselves, as I said before. And this is what really developed, um, you know, your spiritual strength uh, and ultimately helped you to make decisions to kind of walk away from what wasn't serving you. Um, I feel like whoever this is that's praying and hating on your downfall is really, really, um, is really frustrated because you have um, almost like you've reemerged someone completely new the name of this album is called life after death and remember we had physical activity which was the 67 and that was 13 um and 13 is the death card in traditional tarot so as i said it's like you have had some sort of rebirth you have transformed we have change here on the the um you know on the um display here and that's the number five so i do feel like there was a major change um in yourselves and this is something that someone is hating and praying on your downfall about because it's like there's nothing they could do to um to confuse or manipulate you anymore or to uh to distract you from your path because you have really been creating boundaries you've really been focusing on yourself you're not getting um, sidetracked anymore so it's like this nasty person it's like they're trying to figure out some way to distract you some way to to sabotage or to um, confuse you but you have been really connecting um, I feel like this person whether this is um, they cannot um, get to you because you have emotional intelligence we have emotional intelligence here um, on the bottom of the deck and I'm about to clarify health, uh, which is the 71 card. So someone's mental health, um, as I said earlier, is is really, you know, they're con conflicted mentally. And I feel like it's because they're not on your level emotionally. And so whatever games they were used to playing because you've transformed, because you have asc ascended in a lot of ways. It's like those old games, those old trickeries. It doesn't work on you anymore because now you are more emotionally intelligent to so much so that you you're not falling for the okie doke so this is causing some angst in another person and this person is is really nasty this is a nasty boy um that's what the name of the song is so they're very childish um and like i said this is the person that was enabled uh you know you may have enabled them they had a lot of yes people around them um this is the owner of that lonely heart and maybe this is the person that made you feel lonely because they were so absent um emotionally this person may only call you also when they need stuff, when they need things, when they need an ear to, you know, to, to listen to their bull crap or when they need a shoulder to lean on or when they need a couple of dollars. It's like you're the person they go to. Um, and this is somebody who's, you know, you, you got to kind of I'm hearing the word wean them off. So we have um, this card just flew out. It like made like a 360 too. It says knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. So I feel like what the divine is saying with this is especially with the 71, the eight of swords. Like I said, that could be self-deception. And oftentimes that's self-imposed, obviously. So this is the, the energy of someone um, not looking and checking for the red flags, not trusting their own intuition. And I feel with knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. It is clearly saying that you have learned something here. Um, in dealing with this person, um, in, 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 in discovering that someone uh, was manipulative in some way or was deceitful um, or someone that very well may have betrayed you. It's like you know now what's best for you. And that's why I feel you've walked away from the connection because that 71 was giving me like the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is always a very powerful card to me because it is literally the disposition of someone who's uh, walking away from something that no longer serves them, walking away from a connection that leaves them emotionally bankrupt. And now that you know that someone's not willing to do their part or they're not willing to reciprocate, it's like now you know, you know which, what's best for you. And so now you're applying what it is that you've learned uh, in the process. Uh, so that's why 
um, you're you're in the space now where you're you're moving forward and you're focusing on the self, which is you know that eight of you know like the star healing yourself, grounding yourself, uh, finding that emotional, mental, spiritual harmony, um, and this is going to um, make you feel more in alignment. What I have on the bottom of the deck is it says, um, it says, read the room and see who's got their eyes locked on you. So this is a part of the um, reason why I feel like a lot of you have avoided certain um, pitfalls is because you have a strong sense of intuition and you have a knack uh, for reading the energy, you know, reading and picking up on the energy of the people around you. Um, I'm about to clarify the number 41 which is self-discipline. So this is a part of some of the skill sets that you have picked up. Remember, you had learning, uh, teaching and learning. So this is what you've learned to do. And this is all about, you know, like I said, intuition, using discernment, um, you know, being self-aware, but also being able to read energy to pick up on the energy of the people around you. This is almost like moving um, in a room full of vultures. You know, uh, we have Dr. Octagon. And this is by Cool Keith. So it's almost like you you kept a cool and leveled head, even though you could have realized um, that you were around a bunch of um, snakes. Um, but you've you've displayed this sense of calm. Um, you kept it cool in the gang. You know, you really, really didn't get uh, shaken in those moments. I feel like you was really cool, calm and collected in that that instance because you was able to uh, intuitively and discerningly um, see who was who and what was what. So in a lot of ways, you could have avoided some really some really nasty situations. Um, with this 541, I feel you was also, because uh, that's five, and I feel like it's because a lot of you just stayed focused on your path. It stayed focused on whatever it is or was you was working on, um, whether that was creative projects, artistic projects, uh, whatever that is. It was all about, you know, your self-expression ultimately. So let's see, why is um, self-discipline here? So we have self-discipline and it's clarified by you plus me equals love. So there is um, a sense that, like I said, when you learn to love yourself, that makes you more attractive. When you exhibit that self-love, that self-care, that confidence, that attracts you to your divine person. And I feel like there is a cosmic connection um, that you are making with someone or developing with another person um, and it's going to lead to love and I feel like it's because you're living your truth now you know you're starting to um, live your truth live your purpose uh, and you're standing up for what you believe in you're expressing yourself in a way um, that very well may not have ever been um, seen so this is you know attractive in and of itself um, you know the beautiful thing about this is also uh, that, you know, this is like a, a twin flame or soulmate uh, because the you plus me card, um, this could be seen as like the lovers or this could also be seen as like, you know, the two of cups. So, you know, because there's like a masculine and feminine energy um, that's showing, um, you know, these individuals, you know, like they're handing a heart to one another. So it's like they're, they're, they're there for one another. They're giving their love you know, so to speak. So it's really beautiful, um, a beautiful card of, of, of like a soul connection, a twin flame, um, someone who's um, someone who's really there uh, for the right reason. And, and 41 reduces to five and five is the hierophant in traditional tarot. So this is someone um, that you could absolutely uh, have like a marriage, a commitment. This is someone that could come in and propose um, right now we have Chingy featuring Tyrese and this is called Pulling Me Back. And, um, what he says in the song is every time I try to leave something keeps pulling me back, me back, telling me I need you in my life. So it's like, this is somebody that feels like pulled to you, that feels this magnetic pull, this attraction, but with the self-discipline, as I said, you know, you're, you're learning to, to move to the beat of your own drum. Um, your practice in self-care. I feel like this is someone that could also be, um, you know, a little different from you. Whoever this is you're attracting to you uh, could be someone that has um, some sort of ethnic differences. Uh, this can be someone who um, could literally have a different 
spiritual, um, you know, belief system. Um, but this represents, you know, a, a beautiful connection. You know, this is also, um, you finding your, 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 uh, spiritual strength, you know, you finding that sense of, uh, spiritual, uh, alignment also, you know, because this is really, um, the energy of, you know, that hierophant really speaks to spiritual wisdom. Um, it could speak to, you know, your religious beliefs, um, tradition, institutions even. Uh, but this is also, you know, very much uh, that that energy of, you know, maybe there's a marriage in your future. Uh, maybe there's, uh, you know, getting to a point where you're finding yourself in a committed uh, relationship or partnership with someone. And, um, you know, it leading to some sort of long term commitment. Um, but yeah, so let's, you know, what's on the bottom of the deck again is we have that feather card protection and love from your guardian angels. So this could absolutely be, you know, kind of saying that, you know, maybe this union is, is spiritually protected, is, is, um, is being protected. Maybe your ancestors are aligning you. Maybe you have a father figure, as I said, that could be sending in that, that soulmate, that twin flame, that person that's going to speak your love language. That's going to be emotionally intelligent because remember we had emotional intelligent also show up. And this is something that I feel that you all are, um, you know, really asking and, and manifesting and calling in because this is really something very important. Like that's something you've discovered um, was very important to you. That's a love language that you require. Um, so right now we have, um, who is this playing? Pardon me. So we have um, Chico de Barge and this is called Was It Good? So... And, and what he says is, um, what is this? Yeah. Is the love still Yeah, is the love still good is what he's saying. So, yeah, with this change here, yeah, you know, was it good? So maybe that's what changed something is because somebody really did, um, you know, get involved in some sort of third party, I feel. And so, you know, maybe somebody's coming back, returning, trying to talk things out with you, trying to change um, the circumstance, maybe extending an apology or uh, perhaps confessing something to you. And maybe that's going to be your question is like, was it good? You know, like, was it worth it? Uh, you know, because remember, we had somebody gambling, you know, stakes is high. They didn't consider the gamble. But I do feel like you're protected from whatever this is, um, because whoever's preying on your downfall, um, maybe this is a question they're asking themselves. You know, this is someone you hadn't seen in a while because this is from the long time. No, see album. So maybe you've really, you've really blocked someone out. You've changed a lot, you know. So let's see. Why is, um, wow. So change. Your money's changing too. And maybe that's why somebody could be like hating and praying on your downfall. Because this literally like, you know, this person is, is really seeing some sort of transformation in you. And they're also seeing like this stability. I feel like a lot of you have received a lot of of wish fulfillment here my phone just went off i feel there's wish fulfillment coming in i feel there could be also job offer something's changing financially for you and i feel like you're going to be very successful i feel like you're going to be very successful because you got success here and this is something you've manifested and we have Dr. Dre, Eddie Griffin, and this is called Education. Education. So, yeah. So, this is Eddie Griffin, and he's talking about... He's talking... <laughs> this was like when... Back in the days, you know, on the albums, they used to have like the little, little snippets, the little skits. And that's what this is right now. But this is called education. So as I said, a lot of y'all, you know, could have been going to school. And because you may have gotten your degrees, this is going to lead to more money. Because now you can, you know, you can put that you got your master's. And that's going to put you in a completely different salary range. Um, but I feel like also a lot of you all are going to, you know, receive some sort of wish fulfillment or some sort of job offers. Uh, maybe you're making investments and it's going to really 
be lucrative business deals uh, and it's going to just lead to to opulence success expansion growth um, so this is powerful and we got thunder clapping and it says prepare take shelter so there's some sort of communica communication coming in um, and I feel like you know this could be something um, you know that could be you know unexpected news or shocking news you know something that you know you wasn't expecting but I don't feel like it's 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 terrible um but let's see why is financial discipline here why is financial discipline here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why why is financial discipline we got Pharaoh Saunders and this is called Hum Allah so Pharaoh Saunders that definitely is telling me that that's like you know, your angels, your ancestors, your ancestors are blessing you with some, some sort of, um, I feel like some sort of opportunity, you know, maybe there's something coming in unexpected. I have sun gaze here. It says enlighten, enlightenment ritual. And it says, where do you see yourself five years from now? If you don't know, create a vision board. So with this vision, um, with this financial discipline card, maybe that's something you all are looking at. You're looking at your five-year plan. You know, maybe you're asking yourselves these very questions like, okay, where I'm at right now, you know, where's that going to put me five years from now? Maybe a lot of you all with the sun gazing, um, maybe, you know, because that's a really great way to... Uh, decalcify your pineal gland maybe some of you all feel blocked to some degree or maybe you could just really be just um you know in meditation mode and you're you're meditating in the early a.m um you know seeking internal self-audit or seeking those answers because you you know that meditation is going to allow you to get things straight and so that's that's your enlightenment ritual you're seeking enlightenment you're seeking clarity um and I feel there's infinite possibilities. Um, I was literally just singing, keep your head to the sky and infinite possibilities. Keep your head to the sky and keep trying. You got this came out. And then it says, where have you been all my life? So I feel like you are um, really, you know, becoming very sensitive, perhaps that something's coming in. Because remember, we pulled uh, the change card and we had success, um, you know, clarify that. But on that success card, it says money, 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 manifest your dreams, wish fulfillment, job offers, and it says investments. Um, so I feel there could be some sort of wish fulfillment coming in in terms of money, in terms of your success. This could be why folks is hating. This is also because you're setting yourself up for success uh, because you're creating, you know, a plan, a five year plan. Some of you all have created vision boards. You may have several, one for your business, one for your personal, um, one for love. But it's like you're creating these vision boards. This financial discipline is being clarified by these cards. So it's like you're very aware. You know, it's like now you're doing things differently. Um, as I said earlier, I feel like a lot of you got your mind on your money, your money on your mind. And you are very mindful um, of the way you're managing your money. You're also very hopeful for things to improve. You're keeping your options open. Um, you're being more optimistic, more receptive to change. And I feel like this is why you're bumping into someone that's going to feel like home because it says, where have you been all my life? And remember, we pulled the card. You plus me equals love. So I am feeling, you know, that there is someone, uh, especially with that hierophant, you know, reference with that 41, the U plus me was clarifying the self-discipline 41 card. Um, that's the Hierophant card, which is also could be alluding to the fact that there's some sort of uh, marriage proposal commitment that's down the line for you. Um, and this could be why somebody's hating and praying on your downfall. Um, there was a, a lot of child's play. You know, you could have been in a relationship with the mother or father of, to your children or child and this person was very immature and we know that because we saw self-discipline or um, not self-discipline pardon me um, emotional intelligence uh, someone was lacking that because they were very proud um, and they found you know feelings and vulnerability uh, to be something that was uh, a weakness and I feel 
you know, with you, that was just like you was the wounded warrior. You got tired of of fighting for a connection and not feeling any reciprocity in it. So you walked away. So why is this parenting here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? And we have Nas and this is called done. So this is the person that you said, I'm done, done, thin. And you walked away by a spirit of love and light. Why is this parenting card here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall? They have the message of love and of light. Divine Spirit. Divine Spirit. Thank you. We got two cards. And we got flighty, in and out, impulsive, unreliable. And then we also have perform a release ceremony. Write it down and burn it. Take the ashes to a body of water or outside and release. Let it go. Let it flow. So what did I just say? And on the bottom of the deck, it says incubus, succubus. And they're tuning into your channel. And then underneath that, it says Judas. Underneath that, it says reinvent yourself, new wardrobe, haircut, hairstyle, massage, mani pedi, henna tattoo. So this is what you have going on. There is still some sort of emotional tie to someone. And this is the person that was flighty in and out that took a gamble that really risked it all, you know, meaning the relationship uh, for something that didn't work out in their favor. They were not a good judge of character. This was a very immature person, very childish, very selfish. Um, and this could have been the person that you may have a child with or children with because it says parenting. So you really went through a lot of back and forth, a lot of conflict because there was competition for this person's time, energy, attention, and they did not honor you or this connection. And that ultimately led to the demise. This person was very much uh, giving you mixed signals. One minute they was here, next minute they was gone. So they were the type of person that would ghost you uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, and it's because they had a lot of sexual um, demons, sexual addiction, perhaps drug addiction, maybe some sort of um, attachments to other things. I was picking up on the word vice earlier, so they could have had many vices, um, whether that would have been um, smoking some herb, drinking liquor, uh, sexual escapades with different people. Uh, but the divine is clearly saying that you need to perform a release ceremony to get this person out of your energy because I do feel like this person is attached to you energetically and you're carrying this person around and it's really anchoring you and 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 blocking you know certain blessings uh, this energy that is lingering um, is very much aware that you are on the precipice of something new and that you are changing your life that you have transformed but it does not want to be left behind and it's because now there's this awareness of who you are, what you are, and they want to hold on to you. This could be someone that could be codependent uh, to you, to your energy, somebody that has literally lived vicariously through you. Like I said earlier, I was picking up on the sense that this person enveloped you a lot. Like they would, you know, kind of, they, they would overpower you. They would be very controlling um, and you would just kind of shrink in the, you know, behind you know, behind this individual because they were so bodacious. But I feel now, you know, because you freed yourself, remember Jill Scott was saying free because you freed yourself. This person now sees you kind of like spreading your wings um, because we did have that crane in the sky. And it's like now you're seeing everything from a bird's eye view. So you now know who you are. Um, I do get a strong sense of, you know, like a tower moment. Ten of Swords moment. I get a sense of the world card, like just because the karmic completion means that there was a lot of painful lessons learned in that process. And we know that because we had teaching and learning. So not only were you the student um, learning those lessons, but you also became a teacher, you know, teaching someone else. So you've evolved in some way. You've reached a level of self mastery, whereas you're now teaching someone else. Uh, what it looks like to evolve, to grow, to transform because you had personal growth also. So let's go ahead. Let's continue to clarify these messages. We're going to pull some messages from, let's see. I'm going to pull it from the melanated this uh, deck right here. So on the bottom of the deck, look at that. We got the death card. Can't make this up. The death card is here. And this is showing again, 
that there was a death. Death was referenced earlier with physical activity. That was number 67. So that was also in, in, in giving me the inclination that you've gone through some sort of sudden upheaval, a major change, a major transformation. This was a painful loss, but it's like Scorpio's rule death. So you've completely were the conduit of change in that instance. You transmuted whatever that painful situation was that felt like a death, that you were mourning in that instance. You transformed it, turned it around, and now you've emerged someone new. And now someone is really sitting here singing their coulda, shoulda, wouldas with the Four of Cups and realizing that they may have missed a grand opportunity, a golden opportunity with you because now they're seeing you in all of your glory. Um, this Ace of Cups was literally being handed to this person by the divine and they didn't recognize it. They thought having the three cups was more uh, was more meaningful than having that one ace of cups. The three of cups was like third party shenanigans, having, like I said, options, choices, you know, having a rotation of women. And now there's regret, remorse and shame with this nine of swords. Someone's singing their coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Someone's replaying certain things back in their mind. Someone's realizing that they let a good one go. We got the seven of um, the, chal uh, the chariot is here. So this is like, you know, that energy of willfulness, power, determination, ambition and drive. Um, I feel like you've moved forward. You, you, you took ownership, accountability, power back. Um, that's that energy of balance. You know, when you finally find balance and equilibrium in yourself, you can then, you know, control this powerful chariot with these two powerful uh, beasts to move in the direction. It takes, you know, courage and wisdom and strength and assertiveness to be able to move this chariot in the direction you wish to go. And I feel like you also very well may have somebody who could be coming in, rushing in towards you that now has some confidence um, that's coming in with intention. Um, we got judgment here. So, you know, there is someone who's getting a judgment or you are making a judgment call on someone. Um, and that is to, to guard yourself, to block, you know, what no longer serves you. It's almost like you're saying like, if you didn't see my worth before, you damn sure don't deserve to see it now or to have me now. What did I say? The world card is here. So this was a lesson. This was a karmic lesson that you needed to learn. Um, and this was also meant to teach you, you know, your self worth, your self value and how to stand perpendicular in your square, to stand up for what you believe in and to own your power, to not let anyone control you or um, overstep their boundaries with you. Uh, boundaries are very necessary. Boundaries are a, a show of self-respect, self-love. And I feel like that's why self-discipline is here. So someone's really frustrated that you now have this, this self-respect um, you know, this, 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 uh, self-awareness, because that's something that perhaps they were able, um, you know, to, to, um, to toy with in the past, they were able to get away with it. So let's see, I feel like you strongly have a cosmic connection, you know, your, 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 or cosmic companion here. Yep. And I see a page of cups. So this is like a new love offer. This is someone new coming in. So let's see, let's go ahead and clarify these messages. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this deck. One, two, ba, ba. Bottom of the deck is clarifying the 19 pride and the sacred space offerings. So someone didn't accept an offer out of pride, out of ego. We got the four of cups here where the universe is literally handing a uh, ace of cups to someone and they have their arms folded. So someone wasn't recept receptive. And we got Prince here, call my name. So somebody is now, you know, I feel like they're calling your name in, in, you know, in the middle of the night, waking up, calling your name, hearing your name. This is really like somebody who uh, feels like they missed some sort of opportunity because this card says sacred space offerings. So this person didn't accept your offer for love or offer of love with this five of swords. They were very nasty, argumentative. You know, trying to win at all costs, trying to walk away, you know, um, they walked away from something thinking it's almost like, like I said, they, they, they you know, the stakes was high and, and they bet their entire hand. And I feel like you just disengaged, you know, because this person caused a lot of confusion and pain and hurt. They were very nasty with the things they said. And we have knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply 
you know, so it's like you're now applying what you've learned. You've walked away from the things that doesn't serve your highest good. People, places and things. I've, I see retreat here because the five of swords is depicted by two people kind of like they have their backs turned to someone. And then this other person is carrying, you know, two swords. One is raised up. One is raised down. And then the, uh, he's carrying three swords. Pardon me. Three swords, two are raised up and one is down. And then there's two swords on the ground on this depiction. And he's kind of looking back like, yeah, I won that. But he may have won the battle, but he didn't win the war. The war was won when you retreated, you know. And and, and that's the, the this is the self-deception. So someone was deceiving themselves thinking that they've won something. Um, but, you know, really, you, you know, you, you win when you disengage. And, and now someone realizes like, and it says knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. So whatever this person has just learned, it's like now they're trying to apply it. Look at this. We got the two of cups. Somebody realizes the two of cups. This is like, and I'm hearing Pat Benatar's love is a battlefield, you know? So this person now realizes, especially with call my name by Prince, you know, this was somebody that was. You know, trying to be, you know, almost like on that, that, that knight and shiner armor energy, very emotionally manipulative. They didn't give, you know, now they're realizing they should have offered their cup. They should have given equally because with the two of cups, this is like, you know, a spiritual union, a partnership, a connection, a love ship. This is somebody now that wishes they could give to you equally because it says knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. And this is the same person with that eight of, um, you know, that eight. So that was the self-deception. So now that you know, you know, it's like once you know, you can't go back to not knowing. And with this two of cups, now someone knows what you mean to them. Now somebody knows what you meant to them. And we got the knight of cups on the bottom of the deck and I didn't see it. And I just referenced that with the prince, you know, with prince's name. Like they were a knight of cups. So they was just kind of like, you know, you, you can't trust the knight because they kind of rush in, you know, and they lay it on thick, you know, because they're there for, you know, a good time. They're there for that moment, you know, but they have almost like, you know, it's almost like attention deficit disorder. They don't stay there for a long time because they get excited by many things. You know, those are the type that like to rush in, rush out, rush in, rush out. And that's what that flighty in and out energy was, especially that came out with the, um, you know, clarifying the parenting card. So this is someone very impulsive, unreliable. You couldn't really trust this person with your heart because they caused confusion, anxiety. And Prince is saying in the song, I just can't wait to get my arms around you. I love you so much. And remember, we had somebody saying, where have you been all my life? So there is someone I feel that could be watching you. You know, this is somebody that really, really cares about you. We're about to clarify 41 self-discipline and it has you plus me. And I have the Knight of Cups here in my um, hands on the bottom of the deck. So let's see, why is you plus me and self-discipline here? So there is somebody that really wants to come in. And make a love offer, I feel. But you have to be mindful that this isn't like somebody being emotionally manipulative. I feel like they're not going to play with you because you're the queen of swords energy. I was picking up on you being very guarded, very mindful. You know, not just allowing people to come in and toy with your emotions or play with your intelligence. Your sword is up so you're ready to cut people off and give them the business if necessary. You also have this perform a release ritual. So now you know to purge people, places, and things to cut your losses and to also clean, clear, and cleanse, recharge your your batteries, rejuvenate your spirit, so to speak, because you're more self-disciplined now to, um, you know, to do that, that, um, you know, to be more self-aware, more, more conscious of, you know, what you have around you, who you have around you. We have the sun card here. So you're very wise. You're very logical this time around. You're not letting your emotions, um, motivate you or encourage you in any way you're very very much um illuminated and clear you know the sun card also speaks to you having you know some really beautiful days ahead of you brighter days new beginnings you know you're really happy and i see you you really having some sort of success here 
things are balancing out for you. You're going to have some sort of wish fulfillment and options. And you have the infinite, um, the infinite, what is this called? That was, um, oh, let me see. Oh man, what did I just do? Oh, I just turned this on by accident. It was a Tribe Cool Quest. And this is called the Love End Theory album. And the name of the song is the infamous date rape of uh, the infamous date rap. So the, the Love End Theory. So that's that's very interesting. The Love End. So the Love Ended Theory. So the theory is every ending denotes a new beginning. And I feel like you have a new beginning that's going to be very um, successful for you because now you're independent. Your independence is a foundation for your stability and your security and i see here that's a positive change because you have the success card here clarifying the change card and then the sun is on the bottom of the deck as i'm speaking of that so that's saying that you have brighter days ahead no need to worry you know you have stability security independence self-sufficiency this is financial discipline i feel somebody's also coming in that's going to bring you a lot of happiness and joy but i also feel like as i said you know happiness and love and all those all those Things are, you know, that's inside jobs. So I feel like you feel very happy. That was a part of the change you've made was to, to be happy um, first and foremost. And now you, it's a sense like you're, you're attracting and drawing that, that energy, that vibration to you. And this is also bringing, you know, some sort of success and opportunities to you as well. So why is change and success here? And we have the Knight of Swords. So there's some information rushing in. There's like some news coming in and it's good news. It's like unexpected. And we got the chariot here as well on the bottom of the deck. So this is really good news. And I feel like it's through your hard work and effort, through your willpower, your ambition, you know, just you being very focused and motivated. It's like there is something really positive coming out and turning out in your favor. You know, the chariot is like a yes answer. And there is someone that has a lot of regrets. I see this person that rejected your cup of love, you know, in the beginning, that that very proud person is really here um, mourning your loss because I have the chariot. And then behind that is the five of cups. And then there's the ace of cups behind that and the four of um, wands and the ten of pentacles and um, the ten of wands. So this is somebody who is now very aware of what they let go. They let a dime piece go. They let someone very rare go. Remember we had that card that said that you are um you know you're some a beautiful soul, you know, and this person realizes that now. And whatever they chose, you know, over you, it's like, you know, the stakes was high and they gambled and they lost. Now they realize that they have this love for you. This love is overpouring. They have an overwhelming love for you. But I feel like there's, you, you, you're coming into um, a divine partnership connection. And this is leading to emotional fulfillment, family, happiness, longevity. This is like building with another person. This is leading to generational, you know, family and wealth. This is building a legacy with a person. And I feel like you're no longer carrying the burdens on your own. Like somebody's coming in to handle that for you. You know, like you're going to have an alpha male, alpha female. And we got Montel Jordan and this is called Get It On Tonight. So this is somebody that's really coming toward you, um, rushing toward you. This is somebody that's very sexually attracted to you. Whoever you're attracting, this person that's saying, where have you been all my, li my life? You know, whoever this was that you was praying for, hoping for, it's like they, they're coming in, rushing in uh, with a lot of attraction, with a lot of of um, focus on you. Like, I just feel like this person is aware, you know, of how to court you. It's almost like they've been paying attention. You know, this is the type of person, like I said, that cosmic companion. Someone willing to take, you know, this journey with you. You know, this is someone coming in very assertively because they know their role, you know, is to value you, you know, and they have to value who you are because they know that that's being appreciative. They also know that they should focus more on you than on themselves because that, that means, and that's confirmation, then that means they're being attentive. 
And then they also are aware that they have to show you that they care because that will show they're affectionate. So this is someone who's emotionally intelligent, someone that knows that they have to come in, you know, very assertive, very strong, very balanced. This is like yin yang energy, also the chariot. But this is someone that there's love, deep love with this ace of cups here with the four of wands and the ten of pentacles. Like this is someone that wants to they want to really get it on. You know, they want to move along with this. And there's a lot of hatred because you're coming into, I feel like, a very divine connection and somebody that wasted your time because they didn't realize what they had. You know, this person still has attachments. They're still a liar. You know, and they're, they're hating on your growth. They're hating on the fact that you have reinvented yourself. You know, some of you are, like I said, you, you, you got a whole new wardrobe. You changed your look. You changed your style. You changed the way that you are, period. The way you think. And it says underneath the incubus, succubus, they're tuning into your channel. So that means they're stalking you. This is obsession. This is somebody very possessive. And this is nothing more than the X. This is nothing more than those haters that's preying on your downfall. We got Judas underneath that. And that's a liar. That's somebody who is a blatant liar. Somebody who tries to set you up, line you up. Somebody who preys on your downfall. This is like that devil energy. You can't trust them as far as you throw them. And they're hating on the fact that you have reinvented yourself. That you have gone through some sort of startling metamorphosis. That you have transformed. And what it says underneath that is if you have to force the connection, there isn't one. It's a two way street. So this is what this person is like. They're only coming back to distract you because they see that your life is good. Underneath that says life is good. What you put out, you get back. So you're receiving some sort of good karma. And good karma is, as I said, when you change your vibration and frequency, you're going to attract that. So you're attracting what you are now. And this person realizes you're coming into a spiritual partnership. A cosmic companionship. And that's mine. And watch people start saying it. <laughs> As you know, people love to bite on YouTube, boy. They love to bite. They be taking bites. But I'm trying to tell you, y'all, like, for real, this person that's coming in, this is your divine masculine, and this is someone that absolutely is going to feel like home. So why is financial discipline sun gaze? In light, doing an um, enlightening, enlightenment ritual. Where do you see yourself in five years? Infinite possibilities. And where have you been all my life here? For who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Thank you, Spirit. We got the Emperor. That's the same energy. That's the same energy that showed up in the beginning of the reading. With the environment. Remember the environment came out. So whoever this person is, this is someone absolutely... This could be the, the mother, you know, the father to your child because the emperor is that divine masculine energy. So this is like the father figure. You know, this is that person that, you know, could be very proud, you know, just like this pride card. 19. This is that person that didn't accept your cup of love. This is that person that was trying to be controlling and overbearing. You know, they weren't present. And now they're here because they're trying to block something that you're creating for yourself and with up late this person could be up late thinking of you or stalking you or tuning in to some sort of channel this person could also be you know struggling a little bit you know maybe they're struggling financially or maybe this could also be just speaking to you attracting a divine masculine you know with enlightenment ritual you know many of you have realized uh, what your love languages are and what you need in your life. You need somebody that's willing to invest. And also, I feel like a lot of you, you know, you kept f moving forward, upward and onward. Like you didn't get sidetracked, distracted. Because you realize like a thing could only distract you if you give it your attention. And so with this emperor, that could really be you just bossing up, taking control, being that leader, working on your business. But I also just strongly feel like may many of you masculines are, are really embodying that divine masculine energy. Or the feminines could be also embodying that divine feminine energy. You was dealing with someone flighty in and out, as we see, because we got the knight of wands here. And we're about to clarify parenting, flighty ins and out. 
and perform a release ritual. So this is why the divine is saying perform the release ritual so that you can stop this person from having this this uh, this um, concept or this behavior of being, you know, being able to come in and dash out and come in and dash out. Uh, this is somebody who feels like I said, um, you know, it's a very, um, very codependent energy, but also obsessive energy. Uh, so you have to be very mindful um, to create space with this person, create a safe space, a safe distance from this energy, because this is someone who feels um, like they have all rights to do this. They, they don't feel like they need to answer to anybody. They could do whatever they want and they don't really consider other people's fear feelings. The night is um, very challenging energy because they're not there for a long time. They're only there for a good time. And so you could get your feelings all wrapped up in something and then they could be out like a thief in the night, you know, and that's typically what a night does. They'll ghost your ass without any warning and then pop up like everything is cool in the game. And you're sitting there confused from the last time. So why is parenting flighty ins and out here? Seven of cups. I can't make this out. So make this up. So the seven of cups is really showing that there was options. This person had options. And with Airy Lennox up late, this is what a lot of y'all was doing. Y'all was up late wondering what this person was doing. This person was up late because they was out hanging out with different people. Rotation of women. Like I said, this person gambled. They took a gamble. Because they had all these options and they assumed having options was something amazing. And it really just landed them uh, in a heap of mess because they ended up losing the best thing that happened to them. Which was, I feel you all, because we could clearly see the Ace of Cups here is now what this person is like reminiscing on, is thinking about with their arms you know, kind of closed off, their body language is shut off. So it's almost like a, a pouty child here with this four of cups, like, you know, pouting and, and kind of crying over, you know, what happened and what took place. But it's like, this is, you know, a part of onus and accountability. You got to be accountable for your actions. So someone didn't initially see the value of this connection. And now they're realizing that all those options in those chalices on the seven of cups weren't necessarily good options. Some of them got bit, some of them got got stung, you know, some of them got duped, played, some of them were bamboozled, you know, some of them were dealing with, you know, uh, false people, you know, some of them literally got got for everything they had. Um, but I just feel like this was a part of their uh, their shadow work as well, realizing that, you know, every option isn't a good option and needing um, to be more more grounded, need, needing to be more intuitive. So I feel like the divine is telling you it's time to uh, perform a release ceremony so as not to uh, be anchored by this, this person or this individual energetically anymore because they've caused enough pain. We got the three of swords on the bottom of the deck. So this is someone who really, really caused a lot of pain and hurt um, and a lot of, of loss in your life. You felt you know, like I said, a death, but this is because this person has a lot of attachments. Um, they may be struggling with, you know, addictions. Um, we have uh, George Michael, and this is called Careless Whisper. Um, and the name of the album, it looks like is Misfits. It's from some sort of soundtrack. So they, yeah, this was a misfit. This was someone who was really, um, like I said, they were emotionally ignorant, retarded. They didn't really consider anyone else's feelings because of their pride. Uh, because of their stubbornness. Um, and I feel like this person, you know, stabbed you one too many times to in part to some sort of third party. I feel like a lot of y'all cried a lot of tears, um, but I feel like you focus more on your healing. Uh, many of you looked at things from a different perspective. You got out of that victim mentality or that victim mind state, and you really just started to do your work, heal you, um, focus on self-improvement. And as, as I said, and that naturally led you to looking at things from a different perspective, a different vantage point. And you became, like I said, that student and quickly evolved into the teacher. Um, so you focused on healing yourselves because we got the three of swords, we got the hanged man, and then we have the four of swords. So, you know, that, that hanged man status gave you perspective and evolved perspective. And with the four of swords, this is you just really taking the time out to heal to take accountability, to take onus of what may have 
occurred in the relationship and not look at yourself as a victim, but look at yourself as a victor because you've survived. And not only did you survive, you thrived, you learned and you didn't go through anything. You grew through it ultimately. And so now with the nine of swords followed by the seven of I'm sorry, the nine of wands followed by the seven of wands. This is you in super duper defense mode. This is the wounded warrior, but you're still very guarded. And it's because you've given people chance after chance. Um, and they've only, you know, exploited those chances and taken those uh, chances for granted. Um, and with the seven of wands, you're still very guarded. But I feel like there's a beautiful offer coming in for you. Something unexpected, something that uh, you're not anticipating. But I feel like you're going to be very satisfied uh, when it does come in. So let's see. Um, this is going to be the last message. We're going to get some messages from the goddess guidance and then we're going to wrap it up. So on the bottom of the deck, look at that. Beautiful. We got Mother Mary and it says expect a miracle. And underneath that, we have fertility, a star. So there goes the divine feminine. So the divine masculine, the emperor is here and then the divine feminine is right behind. So usually those two always follow behind one another. Um, that's typical with most of the um you know the suits if you see the queen of swords you'll see the king of swords if you see the queen of wands you'll see the king of wands if you see the queen of cups you'll see the king of cups and king of pentacles you'll see the queen of pentacles so it's it's literally like they're always right behind one another um with careless whisper um i feel like you know somebody really didn't speak their truth you know they didn't speak up you know um you know because like i said pride will have you doing some strange things and so because someone didn't want to appear weak or someone didn't want to, you know, show their vulnerabilities, they may have just simply, you know, you know, proceeded to deceive themselves on the split. We have expect a miracle and then we have true love. So I feel like, as I said, you have like that cosmic companion that's coming in. And we do see that because we have the two of cups. We have the you plus me equals love. We have where have you been all my life? These are all, uh, you know, indicating that there is something very magical that is happening. I also felt like you were receiving some sort of wish fulfillment because you had the change card. So there's something beautiful changing, you know, something amazing. And so with this careless whisper song by George Michael. And I just heard the words, now that you're gone. And he was like, why you had to leave me alone? So it's like, that's what somebody is saying right now. Like they're literally like, you know, almost like um, having a pity party, you know, because it's almost like they're watching, you know, they're having to watch you kind of move on. I see home on the bottom of the deck. So something is like positively changing within your home environment. Um, maybe, like I said, some of you all are getting promotions. Some of you all could be relocating, moving into a larger apartment or getting approved for a home loan. Some of you all could be just, you know, working on the physical body, the self. Maybe you're doing some sort of detox, purification. Maybe you're fasting. Um, maybe a lot of you are changing your diets. Um, but the physical body is, you know, all encompassing. So maybe if you're not, um, on a diet, say, um, just in terms of food, maybe you're on a diet of what you're listening to. Um, maybe you could be on a spiritual diet of what you're watching, um, you know, so as to just keep your spirit pure, keep your energy grounded. Um, so we have here blossoming on the bottom of the deck. So we have something is blossoming here. I feel like, you know, there is um, something that could be, you know, happening behind the scenes, uh, something that's transforming. Uh, right behind the scenes. I feel like, you know, um, you're being very patient. I feel like the divine wants you to be patient uh, with yourself, um, be patient with the process, because this has been a long journey. I do feel like there's been a lot of um, tough lessons that you've had to learn. Uh, but I feel like you've you've really survived them all. You've grown. You've gained a, a strong sense of spiritual strength because I do feel that you're very sensitive right now to energy. So you're not you know, you're very particular about the, the people you have around you, the things you're ingesting, listening to, watching. Um, so you are you're you're really um, opened, you know, to receive something new. And maybe you're growing a little impatient. Maybe you're growing a little 
um, excited about, you know, some change. And it's like the divine is just saying, let things just naturally and organically, you know, um, happen and unfold. Uh, for many of you, you need to go outside, um, take a nature walk. Um, you know, that will help with you grounding yourself. Uh, this also is really necessary for maybe even meditating. Maybe you find it difficult to meditate in your home. So maybe you need to go to that body of water and just close your eyes or go to, you know, some, some beautiful remote location, like a park, um, a trail and just really ground yourself, center yourself. Um, I feel like there's some sort of download or divine intervention that will take place. Um, and I feel like you will find balance, you know, that divine and masculine, um, energy can become balanced. So you'll be able to have emotional and that logical harmony. It will be harmonized and you'll be able to make decisions, um, that will best suit you. So there's a need a necessity to go out in nature, perhaps, um, to get out of the house. Maybe a lot of you have been, you know, in that hermit mode or just kind of been just setting around, but it's time to, to get out, go out, uh, be more active, perhaps take a walk, take a jog. So we have sorceress here I just flew out. And this is, uh, clarifying the health card. Knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply in the two of cups. So many of you, you know, that love is, um, you're on the precipice of coming into a beautiful love connection because I feel like a lot of you all have manifested it. Um, you know, one thing about self mastery, one thing about healing is you learn to, uh, become, you know, the conduits of change as well as, uh, you know, how to co-create with source. And I feel like that's something that a lot of you all have been doing is you've been co-creating with source. You've been turning your, uh, thoughts and change, you know, turning them into reality because you've been really setting intention. So you are sorceress, you are, uh, psychics, you are, um, oracles. Um, many of you are intuitives, uh, and we have home here on the bottom of the deck and we're about to clarify self-discipline you plus me and the queen of swords. So you became very protective. Like I said, very, very protective. You started to display self-respect. Um, you started to cut out what wasn't serving you. And more importantly, you started to, um, really exhibit, you know, that self-love, that self-worth, um, started to cut out what wasn't serving your highest good. Um, be it the people, places, things, you started to change the way you were thinking. Um, so there were a lot of, of ideologies, belief systems, habits, behaviors that a lot of you had to, to get rid of. Um, we have, uh, Nas, the prediction playing. So many of you really predicted, like I said, because the sorceress is, you know, she's, she's magical. She's, she's someone who can manifest her, her clear intentions into reality. And so, you know, with this predictions, many of you, like I said, you, you're predicting that there's new love coming in, you know, because this is the self-discipline with the you plus me and the queen of swords. So you're highly intuitive and you know that somebody that's coming in is someone that is best suited for you. Someone that's going to feel very familiar. It's going to be just very natural, very organic in the way in which this relationship is cultivated. Um, and I feel like this is someone who's really, um, going to, um, maybe this is you and this person may move in together, um, move into the same home. Um, this is someone that, you know, may live around you, reside around you. Maybe this person will visit you. Um, let's see why they will feel like home. I just heard they will feel like home. So why is self-discipline you plus me and the queen of swords here for who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? So we got fertility. So you are the divine feminine. And this is why there's a lot of hatred because absolutely you've transformed. This is the, uh, you know, this is the divine feminine that embodies all of the Queens. So you embody all of the qualities, characteristics of all of the Queens. And this is what makes you, you very beautiful, very powerful, a master manifester, very wise, very strong, very abundant, very successful. Um, and you attract what you desire. So this self-discipline makes you a magnet. You're a, a magnet to everything you want. You're a magnet to everything you desire. And we have um, Method Man featuring D'Angelo, Break Up to Make Up. So you could have, um, you've cut someone off. There's, there's this, this Queen of Swords energy is showing that you've really cut people, places, and things off that were not serving your highest good. With this Queen of Swords and the fertility, you know your worth and value. And perhaps you was going around and around in circles with somebody, um, you know, who you would have this, this kind of like, you know, this back and forth, this emotional roller coaster with, 
And this time around, I feel like you're done, done, Finn, because the Queen of Swords is finally making the decision to cut it off for once and for all. You have the fertility, which is the divine feminine, and you have the emperor here on the board. So I do feel like this was um, like the father or the mother to your child, because remember, we had parenting here on the board as well. So there is someone that was, um, you know, in your life to teach you valuable lessons. Um, this was someone that could have been um, your soulmate who was brought into your life, um, you know, for a reason. This was preordained. This was a part of your destiny. And I feel like you've learned what you were needing to learn um, in this process. And so we have focused intention here. So I do see you, you know, really um, setting your intentions high, um, focusing on um, manifesting something new. Uh, with this, um, we got change, uh, success, and the Knight of Swords. And then we have Diana, focused intention on the bottom of the deck in my hand. So I am seeing that you are, you've got your eyes set on and, and, and locked in on something you want. Um, and this is something that is going to change your life for the better. It, it's, it's going to improve your finances. Um, it has a lot to do with some sort of investments or some sort of financial opportunity, blessing. Um, this could even be love, you know, uh, but I do feel like there's some communication that's rushing in, something that you could have been anticipating. So why is change here for who's playing on Scorpio's downfall? Success and the Knight of Swords. Wow, a couple of cards came out. So we got golden opportunity. So you have a golden opportunity coming in, which is that wish fulfillment. And that's why you're setting your intentions. Because you, you, you want this. this you, it's like you want this bad. So whatever you've been setting your intention for, it, 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 it's like this is a yes answer. And this is why people are praying on your downfall because you're literally very psychic. You're very abundant. You're very beautiful. You're a master manifester. You're successful. You're very loving, nurturing, and caring. You are birthing new ideas, new realities. Uh, you are the sole controller, controller of your reality. You know your worth and value, so you're not settling. Um, this is someone who has um, healing abilities, very loving, nurturing. So you know how to um, cultivate relationships. You're a great healer. You're a great teacher. Um, you're a great mother. You have that maternal instinct. And this is, you know, all reasons to have people kind of like, you know, very jealous and envious because it's almost like you are a Renaissance woman, an alpha female, alpha male, alpha. Um, you know, you have that tendency to just naturally draw and attract what you want. So we have medicine woman here, just as I'm speaking of you being, you know, that great healer, that channeler. This is beautiful energy. So with this fan, fine, um, medicine woman, it says you are a channel for divine healing. So you have been really calling in something. Um, with sun gaze, enlightenment rit ritual, and what, where do you see yourself, infinite possibilities, where have you been? You're manifesting this divine masculine. And I feel like you're also, while you're manifesting this divine masculine, you're working on your finances, improving your finances. This is money management. This is, you know, building your credit. This is getting, you know, your, your ducks in a row uh, because it's almost like you know what's coming. So you have a very powerful energy here of really, um, you know, healing, you know, the past, uh, pains, closing up those cycles, like releasing what no longer serves you. Um, and you're also, you, you can sense some, some sort of communication is coming in. Um, and we have Gordon Banks and this is called keep you in mind. So yeah, some, somebody's keeping you in mind here, especially with where have you been all my life? So this person is really, you know, whoever's coming in that you're manifesting, because I feel with medicine woman, you're manifesting, especially with medicine woman and Astara. Uh, these are both, you know, oracles. These are, these are uh, very powerful energies that can manifest their, their clear intentions um, into reality. Um, this is also very psychic energy, very intuitive energy. Um, so you are very sensitive, as I was saying earlier. Um, and you're able to pick up on energy intuitively and telepathically, maybe even via your dreams. But you could sense communications coming in. Um, and we have peace. Um, Irene. So it's almost like the divine is saying, look, everything's going to work out in your favor. It's 11, 11 on the clock. So you have a twin flame that's trying to come in. 
But before they can, you got to release your past, release your ex, perform a release ceremony. And this is going to bring you peace. I feel like many of you are energetically anchored right now uh, to something or someone from your past. Some of you all may need to get rid of the, your mattresses if you shared that with a significant other because energetically it's keeping you, um, you know, kind of like restricted, stuck, stagnant. So you may need to invest in getting a new mattress. Some of you need to get rid of jewelry. Some of you need to get rid of clothing, furnitures, um, you know, certain things that were in the home when you shared it with that person, because that could be holding you back from, you know, having this new beginning, this new uh, venture. But Irene is here promising peace. She's letting you know that there's nothing for you to worry about because everything is working out in your favor. So regardless of who's praying on your downfall, on the bottom of the deck, we got infinite supply here, Sedna. So not only is Irene promising that your life is going to be at ease, you're going to have peace, and there's nothing for you to worry about. Sudden is saying that you're going to be supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. And then you also had the success card. You have the fertility card, golden opportunity card. So these are things that you already know are coming because you're a medicine woman and the sorceress or sorcerer at the same time. So a lot of you Scorpios, you're very aware of these changes. I feel like you're getting rewarded you're being blissed with these wish fulfillment these miracles because you have really um gone through painful losses we saw that with karmic completions but i feel like you're coming out of um you know on the other end you're coming out on the other end of that with you know new opportunities but you do need to for many of you need to perform a release ceremony because i do feel like energetically someone is still holding on to you and we see that with incubus succubus this is somebody that is like an energy vampire a leech a parasite and this person stalks your life because we got they're tuning into your channel social media driving by your home looking at old pics and this is obsessed it's a secret admirer stalker alert so this is someone really really attached to you and this is someone that lies a lot they lie often um this is someone that you know doesn't say much about what they have going on in their lives, um, keeps you guessing, constantly playing games, flighty in and out. And this is all to toy with you. Um, this is all emotional manipulation uh, because this person still has a lot of options. They keep their options open. And this is why they um, they don't settle down or buckle down. Um, and this could for many of you all be someone who could have gotten someone pregnant on the side. Um, or this is someone you may have already have children with, but whoever that is, that person, that past person, hating, praying on your downfall, they don't want to see you move on. They don't want to see you come into this divine pound, uh, relationship. I feel like you have a cosmic companion that is coming in because this is someone you've asked for, prayed for. And we have Tiana Taylor, and this is called let's build. So you're going to be building with someone, whereas this past person was destroying what you two were building. So the person coming in, they're matching your fly. They're on your frequency. They speak your love language. They're going to be attentive. This is someone that is going to be the alpha to you because you're an alpha. And I feel like this is going to, you know, this is beautiful. This is energy that's going to really um, thrust you forward. And I feel like, you know, you're on the precipice of this change because you have both the sorceress and medicine woman here. And uh, both of these energies are very, very psychic, very intuitive. They're like oracles. And the train is going by, so I do feel like there's powerful movement forward. There could be a travel, um, some travel in the near future. Somebody could be visiting you, or you could be going to visit someone. Someone could be traveling to see you. But um, that's why you got some haters, because you're you're finally done. You're, you're, you're done, done, Finn. You're walking away from what no longer serves you. And um, this is something that I feel is catching some folks off guard because they may have been very used to um, manipulating and calling the shots in the past. Uh, maybe because, like I said, there was um, a strong sense of like enabling um, and just kind of like, you know, just just appeasing and pleasing, but not really speaking your truth. Whereas now in this Queen of Swords energy. You're speaking exactly what you feel. You're saying what's on your mind, on your heart, and you're not holding back. And if they don't like it, sucks to be them. You know, you're cutting your losses and your ties. But um, there is some energy around you, so be mindful. Keep your head on the swivel because you got this Judas energy. You got this incubus succubus energy. Um, you also got some jealousy, like people stalking you, you know, studying you, watching you, trying to 
do you and only you can do you. So just be mindful, stay alert, stay aware, Scorpios. That is your reading. I hope the messages resonated for you. I want to give a shout out to um, someone that left me a beautiful love donation the other day. I want to say thank you to my soul sister. Give me one moment. It's loading. Come on now. And I want to say thank you to my soul sister, Ao Scorpio. Thank you, beautiful soul. I appreciate you dearly. Thank you. May that beautiful love donation be rotated to you infinitely. All right. But thank you to anyone that may be new. I hope the readings resonated. If you found it did, please be kind. Hit the like, the share, the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell notification so you know whenever I, I upload. If you are new, you already know what it is, beloveds. Love is love is love. Until next time, I send a big fat ashe. Peace.